All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Piety is not in turning your faces towards the east or the west. Rather, the pious are those who believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets, who give charity out of their cherished wealth to relatives, orphans, the poor, the needy travelers, beggars, and for freeing captives, who establish prayer, pay alms tax, and keep the pledges they make, and who are patient in times of suffering, adversity, and in the hate of battle. It is they who are true in faith, and it is they who are mindful of Allah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master Prophet Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. The divine bounties and blessings given to the followers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the month of Shaban are numerous. Among the greatest occasions that we celebrate in the month is changing the direction of Qibla from Bayt al maqdis to the Holy Mosque in Mecca. In fact, this is one of the greatest occasions in the history of Muslims. When the Almighty Allah fulfilled the wish of his Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in turning the direction of prayer to Kaaba, as was the same direction of prayer of his forefather, Prophet Ibrahim, may Allah be pleased with him. Before his migration, Prophet Muhammad used to direct his face in prayer towards Bayt al maqdis in Jerusalem upon the command of Allah. He continued to do so for 16 or 17 months. However, he was longing for a revelation to come down, ordering him to turn his face in prayer towards the Kaaba. <clears throat> he was asking Allah by his heart and invoking him silently, trusting that Allah would fulfill his wish. The Almighty Allah responded to him and ordered him to turn his face in prayer towards the Kaaba. Allah says, Indeed, we see you, O Prophet, looking up to heaven, turning this way and that. Now we will make you turn towards a direction of prayer that will please you. So turn your face towards the sacred mosque in Mecca, wherever you are. Turn your faces towards it. <clears throat> when completing the story of changing the direction of Qibla, one learns many lessons and insights from this divine honor to the Prophet peace be upon him. Among the key lessons are the following ones. The great status and position of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. This is made clear in Allah's saying, we will make you turn towards a direction of prayer that will please you. It is a favor and bounty from Allah to show the great status of the Prophet. This is similar to Allah's saying, and surely your Lord will give you so much to you that you will be pleased. It was a continuous blessing from Allah to his Prophet, peace be upon him. How could one think the opposite? While Allah said to the Prophet, did we not relieve your heart for you? O Prophet, and said, and we removed your burden. Allah also addressed his Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Indeed, we have granted you a clear triumph, O Prophet, so that Allah may forgive you for your past and future shortcomings. And Allah purified the Prophet's tongue, saying, Nor does he speak of his own whims, and praised his mind, saying, your fellow man is neither misguided nor astray. Praised his sight, saying, The Prophet's sight never wandered, nor did it overreach. And praised his teacher, saying, He has been taught by one angel of mighty power. And praised his morals, saying, And you are truly a man of outstanding character and praised his character in Tudul, saying, 
Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have an, ex an excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day and remembers Allah often. Among the learned lessons also is the necessity of adhering to the upright approach. <laughs> this event has put the basis of moderation for this nation as the Almighty Allah says, and so we have made you all believers an upright community so that you may be witnesses over humanity. This uprightness means <coughs> goodness, moderation, and balance. We need to adhere to this moderation which the Almighty Allah has honored us with. We need to adhere to it in all of our affairs. For example, Allah says, do not be niggardly nor extravagant that you may later feel reprehensive and constrained. And also says, they are those who spend neither wastefully nor stingly, but moderately in between. Imam al awzai says, whenever Allah, glory be to him, gives you a command, you will find the Satan trying to tempt you in either of two ways either to be excessive or to be negligent with respect to it. Thus, we have to abide by the approach of easiness and tolerance, not the approach of negligence. It is the approach of moral adherence to the rules of the Sharia without any degree of extremism. Though the fact that the nation of Prophet Muhammad will be witness to all other nations means honor, this honor obliges the Muslims to totally abide by their duties in order to deserve such an honor. Abu Sa'id al Khudrain narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Noah will be brought before Allah on the day of resurrection. He, and he will be asked, Did you convey the message of Allah? He will reply, Yes, O Lord. And then Noah's nation will be asked, did he convey Allah's message to you? They will reply, no warner came to us. Then Noah will be asked, who are your witnesses? <coughs> he will reply, my witnesses are Muhammad and his followers. Thereupon, you Muslims will be brought and you will be bear witness. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, recited, and thus we have made you Muslims and upright community so that you may be witnesses over humanity and the messenger a witness over you Another lesson to be learned from changing the direction of the Qibla is the immediate immediate response to the faithful to the commands of the Almighty Allah and the commands of his Prophet peace be upon him this event marked a special stance in proven companions trust in whatever Allah, the Prophet conveyed to them from the Almighty Allah. Allah said, we assigned your former direction of prayer only to distinguish those who would remain faithful to the messenger from those who would lose faith. It was certainly a difficult test except for those guided by Allah. They gave the finest examples of the immediate response to Allah, glory be to him, and his messenger, peace be upon him. Once they heard the divine command of Allah to change the Qibla from Al-Aqsa Mosque to the Holy Mosque of Mecca, they immediately changed the, the direction while they were performing a prayer at that moment. They never argued about this command or even waited till they the end of their present prayer. They never hesitated to obey the command. They turned immediately to face the holy mosque while they were in the position of bowing down. Ibn Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, while some people were offering Fajr prayer at Qubba Mosque, called Qubba Mosque, someone came to them and said, Quranic literature has been revealed to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, tonight. And he has been ordered to face the Kaaba of Mecca, so you too should turn your faces towards it. 
Their faces were then towards Cham in Jerusalem, so they, to, they turned towards the Qibla of Kaaba in Mecca. <clears throat> One of the lessons to be deduced also is the importance and status of prayer and showing Allah's infinite mercy. In this regard, the noble Quran links between prayer and two of the most remor remarkable events in the Islamic history. That is the miracle of the journey of night and ascension. As prayers were prescribed upon Muslims during this journey to show how great and important they are. Also, the Quran links prayer to the incident of changing Muslims' direction of prayer and even employs the term Iman, that is faith, in reference to it. Allah Most High says, and Allah was not going to make your faith be fruitless. Commenting on this verse, Ibn Abbas said, when the Prophet was ordered to direct his face to the Kaaba in prayer, the companions asked about the conditions of their Muslim brothers who died before that new order. So Allah Most High revealed this, saying, Allah was not going to make your faith fruitless, meaning that, that facing Al-Aqsa Mosque in prayer was an act of obedience. And so is the case right now with directing the faces to al kaaba which makes them rest assured that their previous prayers towards Al-Aqsa were accepted. Then he, the Almighty, concluded the verse in a way that makes the believers feel peace and mercy, saying, most surely Allah is affectionate, merciful to the people. That's to say that Allah is affectionate, merciful to the people. So how would his affection and mercy to Muslims be like? <coughs> Another lesson to be learned is how the tight, how tight is the bond between the sacred mosque in Holy Mecca and Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The sacred mosque is the first mosque ever to be built on earth for worshiping Allah, while Al-Aqsa Mosque is the second. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, I said, O Messenger of Allah, which mosque was built first? He replied, Al-Masjid Al-Haram. I asked, which was built next? He replied, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. I asked, what was the period in between them? He replied, 40 years. He then added, whenever the time for prayer comes, perform the prayer for all the earth as a place of worshiping for you. Changing Muslims' direction of prayer has actually closely linked the two mosques to each other, exactly as has been done by the miraculous night and ascension journey. Allah Most High says, glory be to him, who made his servant go on a night from the sacred mosque to Al-Aqsa Mosque, the surroundings of which we have blessed, so that we may show him some of our signs. Surely he is the hearing, the seeing, which means that they should be protected from any negligence, for they are a trust which Muslims all over the world should preserve to the end of time. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <coughs> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, the various stages of the Prophet's life have been characterized by positivity. For example, when he was 15, he witnessed Hilf al-Fudul, or the alliance of al-Fudul, to which the different clans of 
tribes were invited to conclude an agreement not to leave an oppressed person, be him from Mecca or any other place, unless they support him until he would get his rights back. Concerning this alliance, the Prophet peace be upon him said, I had witnessed a pact of justice in the house of Abdullah ibn Jad'an that was more beloved to me than a herd of red camels. If I were called to it now in the time of Islam, I would respond. At the age of 35, <coughs> the Prophet took part in the reconstruction of the Kaaba as he carried stones. Not only that, but he also managed to settle the conflict that was going around who would take place among the different clans of Quraysh when each of them wanted to have the honor of placing the black stone in its position. Uh, they followed the counsel of Prophet peace be upon him who asked them all to participate in carrying the stone. After that, he himself put it in its place. After being empowered as a messenger, he peace be upon him was a role model of positivity and all the other aspects of life. He was the best, the most courageous, and the most generous human being. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, when fight grew first, we used to seek protection by the Prophet, peace be upon him. There would be none closer to the enemy than him. He himself took part in digging the trench. In truth, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has urged his ummah to be positive and warned them from passivity saying, do not let yourself be pliable, saying, if people are good, then you be good, and if the, they go wrong, then you go wrong. Rather, make up your own minds. If the people are good, then you are good, and if they are evil, <coughs> then do not behave unjustly. Positivity, the Positivity means that man should shoulder his responsibility towards his religion and country. In fact, man's love to his country is not restricted only to feelings and emotions, but rather should be translated into a behave behavior and work. A positive man is the one who reacts to the issues of his society and is affected by the surroundings and leaves impact, a positive impact on his community. There is no doubt that one of the true features of positivity is to participate on all what serves the society and leads to building countries and maintaining their peace, stability, and progress. Whether through defending them, working hard, showing solidarity and mercy among the members of, one, of one's country, or to making positive participation on all the constitutional and national entitlements, taking into account to be truly honest in doing what can be done to secure a high rank for our country in accordance with what the free national conscience tells every honest patriot to do. Uh, poet Shalfi said, in the blood of every free man, Countries have a favor and a do that.